Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this new edition of Sotorial Talks. Today, we have special guests, and it's bizarre for me to say special guests because we don't receive them as guests. We are at their place in Tennessee. Can you believe that? We are in Tennessee, Columbia. Columbia. T Columbia, which is close to Nashville, Very right? Very close to Nashville. Tennessee. And so, uh, these are uh, Trenton and ETH, uh, we are connected since I would say a couple of years mm -hmm. because they have a YouTube channel uh, called uh, Trenton and ETH actually on YouTube. Bigger than ours, there are 350,000 uh, subscribers. We are a little bit, we are little um, beginners in comparison to them. And so when we knew we were coming in their area, we were like four hours driving by car, we couldn't resist to say, okay, these guys, they are cobblers, they've been tearing apart so many shoes, I destruct, they destroy shoes to look into the guts. And we found this, it was so interesting, even for people like us, we're supposed to be experts in shoes, but this is such a interesting and complicated and complex, uh, almost rustic industry that uh, we said, okay, if we come in this area, we have no, no excuse, we have to meet with Trenton and ETH, so we are happy to have you at your place. It's funny, it's me. I, I look like I'm the host, I'm not the host, but it's so, I'm so happy to, to, to discuss with you well, today you. because it's gonna be, I suppose we're gonna speak about shoe selections and stuff like that, but um, uh, it's also just a pleasure for me to be here in, in, with people who are in the know and who have the same passion that we have for this little object in life called yeah. a shoe, but that can change a lot of things in terms of look, but also in terms of comfort and even in terms of health. So here we go for our selection with Trenton and ETH of the shoes under $500. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here with my beautiful wife. She's behind the camera. And um, I always say that because I have a tendency to say, I do this, I do that. No, we do this. Yeah. As you, you work <laughs> as together, we, pair, yeah. we work, it's, it's a family family. business. Yeah. Yes, it Same here, right? It's with your father and uh, the whole family is pretty our much involved. Yeah. Everybody's our involved with it. Okay, same here because uh, we are doing everything together and our son is editing everything. So it's really a family yeah, it business. It's so, fun that way. It yeah, is. it is yeah. super fun. So thank you for having me. I'm super Absolutely. happy to be with you. Well, it's great because as we discussed uh, earlier, you know, we have such a, a wide spectrum of an audience. Yes. Um, you know, we get a lot of folks that are college age kids, folks in their 20s, 30s, maybe just starting out. You have, a, we get a lot of folks that uh, have been buying certain brands for years, you know, out of the mall or at the discount stores. And then they've started watching our channel. They've started watching us redo shoes. And they said, hey, I have a newfound respect for quality shoes. Yeah. And then you have a lot of folks um, that, that watch our channel as well. But the folks that, you know, are hitting other levels of the finest bespoke shoes in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so it's what a great time to have, you know, just the knowledge that we have as cobblers, the knowledge you have of all the different, uh, you know, shoes and clothing and whatnot throughout the world, just to be able to share that knowledge. And, you know, this is the perfect time to be watching uh, because like I said, we are gonna bounce some great brands off to these folks that, yep. you know, yeah, are within a, uh, an affordable price. With pleasure. So what, what, what's your brief? You want uh, any kind of shoes or under a certain amount? Or what, what so, do you want from me? Let's stick yeah. with uh, what you guys have been telling us. Uh, generally around $200 to $500. Okay. Uh, those are generally the shoes, you know, that are being sent back in to Heath and I to repair. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, you know, most folks can fall within that price range. Okay, okay. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm very happy to do this with you. I, I don't know which kind, I, I know your channel. This is why we came to you. Well, we can tell to the people, it's it's a funny, YouTube is a funny, uh, it's like becoming a community. It is. Between YouTubers, right? Yeah, uh, we don't know each other personally. This is the first time we meet, first but we've been that. speaking mm -hmm. a lot through Instagram, through stuff like that. And then it's funny because the people who are gaining some kind of audience, like we do, like you do, like uh, a few other friends have, it's interesting because um, I, I used to tell people so many times, hey, listen guys, we have no competitor on the internet, we have colleagues. You know, mm -hmm. Because who are, how many of us are speaking of real shoes or real suits or real artisanal stuff on the internet? Not many. Not many. We are a little team of people trying to say, hey people, <laughs> stop giving your money to Hugo B, to Ralph yeah. L, or yeah. to Giorgio A, yeah. you know, and try to think a little bit about what you buy. So it means beyond the passion for shoes and stuff like that, what we do with my wife and with my son and with my team in general is start to, it's like a wake up call 
to the people. Wake up. Yes. Stop being fooled by big browns who are taking your money and selling you plastic yes. for the price of gold. Yep. And you know that in France, we know this very well because the three biggest luxury group in the world are French. You know, LVMH, Hermès, mm -hmm. carrying all this is French. I have nothing against these people. This is wonderful success. But still, they participate to this massive marketing yes. that creates some odd reaction. And in the world of shoes, we know that many people, when they discover uh, the things that you are doing or we are doing, they say, oh my God, this is beautiful. And I thought I couldn't afford that. And, mm -hmm. and they are very surprised that sometimes quality costs less yep. than the brand. And we hear that all of the all time. The time. Yeah. Um, you know, when, and, the, and the thing about it is, is so many people, just like you said, are fooled by the brands that have the most advertising budget. Yes. Um, so, it, you know, they, it's, especially with a lot of men, it's all about um, ease of shopping. Yeah. So if I, if I go to the mall or if I'm with my wife, I let her choose my shoes. Yes. They don't know a lot. So, you know, they may walk into a department store. Yep. Uh, they may go to somewhere like, you know, Johnston Murphy, Kohan, a lot of the brands yep. that you're seeing out there in department stores and the, the amount of money that folks are paying for those shoes doesn't always equate to quality. No. And get the same shoe in every color. Yeah. yeah. Just to cover <laughs> yeah. one stop shop. Yeah. yeah. And then when yeah. they bring it to us after years of wear and they say, hey, I want you guys to resold this pair of Johnson Murphys or whatever brand it may be. Yeah. What they don't understand is one, these shoes, the quality is very hard for us to resell that shoe. Yeah. And and they they were unaware that maybe it's you know, the heel block is hard plastic yeah. with wrapped in a leather veneer, you know, and and, and it's it's things like that they just don't know. So, yeah. you know, we've enjoyed being able to um, break open shoes yeah. and show people the quality of the shoe that you're sending into us right. and, and educate them. And yeah, and, and did you notice, because it's the same for us, when people, they, they fall into the shoe passion. First, first of all, young guys, when they look at our shows or read their, our books or read our blog or whatever we do, uh, the first time they put on a real pair of leather shoe, most of them, they send, it's like an orgasm for them. They send a, an email and say, oh yes. my gosh, yep. I yep. feel like I'm a real man. I've I feel like that. I'm a real person all of a sudden. You know, they, because most of them, they, grow, they grew up without even trying on a real pair of leather shoes. Yes. And it changed everything. It's specifically, yep. you know, of course, the style, the look and everything, but even the comfort. Yep. And, and, and a lot of those young guys, they, they exude that and it takes it to other within the clothing yeah. or they're going to that job interview, yeah. they're going to feel a little bit more confident. Oh, yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, for sure. We have an example. Um, years ago, we had um, a, a, good, a good friend of us from Chile, you know, South, South America. He was in Paris. He's a, he's a dentist, a professor, a uh, very high-level guy. He's, um, he's teaching implantology in France. And he was in Paris when I had an event. I don't remember. It was a book signing of maybe the Italian gentleman. I don't remember, darling. Italian gentleman, I think. It was a massive event that we had. But I, he said, oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know you had an event. Uh, Hugo, it's a good friend of us. He was in Paris. So I said, yeah, but uh, I don't have a shoe. He said, listen, just buy yourself a good pair of shoes. It's going to mm -hmm. be just enough. And you can come casual by yourself. And so we took him to Alton Bautier. It's a friend, a brand that we love. He bought a pair and just with one pair of shoes, even him, he said, he was looking at himself from the mirror and said, oh my gosh, I can't, I can't, I can't believe a simple pair of shoes was. Well, simple pair of shoes, just a real pair of shoes, changed the whole picture. Well, it just gives you, you exude confidence. Yeah. It, you, you look at it and you just feel better. You walk a little more pep in your step. I know that's the way with I am even when I get a new pair of really nice quality shoes. Yeah. I just put them on my feet and it's like, wow. You know, the, the craftsmanship exactly. and the quality that went behind this, it just, exactly. it makes me feel better. So ladies and gentlemen, you know that we all love shoes at this table. And uh, this is something that we, we, we could speak hours and we're gonna maybe speak hours yes. because we have no agenda, right? We no have agenda. no, we no planning, a it's a, just a real stuff. Okay, yeah. so let's start, let's jump into the big swimming pool and say, okay, so you want to list. So uh, I'm pretty sure you covered pretty much all the brands I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about. But it's going to be awesome. maybe a reshuffle a little bit all this and give you an, um, a, a clearer view. So I selected, you asked me, under 500, I selected, I don't know, 14, 15 brands. But before going into the brands, I'd like to re-clarify, if, if, if I may, yes, a few yes. ideas. Because many people, and specifically since the COVID crisis, are becoming extremely, um, I would say, at last, more interested 
in where the shoes are made, how are they made, with which technique. Back in the years when we started writing Parisian Gentleman with Sonia in 2000, I started in 2009, it's the prehistorical time almost, uh, nobody have heard about Goodyear, Blake, mm -hmm. uh, Rapid Blake, and all that, you know, these are construction techniques. Uh, I, I suppose your public pretty much know this, right? Or what? Well, you know there, like it's funny, up? we still get a lot of questions sent to us uh, yesterday, I posted, I was like, hey, what questions do you want us to ask? And that is still a big yeah. topic. What yeah, yeah, can yeah, you yeah. talk about Blake versus Goodyear Weld and yeah. yada yada? Well, I mean, we're not gonna go too much into yeah. this right now, but, uh, but what is interesting now is that more and more people, and I noticed this after COVID, became more sensitive. Some kind of uh, industrial patriotism, you know, say, oh, we want shoes made in, for example, yes. in France, I want shoes made in Europe now. Like, like all of a sudden China becomes the big, bad guy, you know, we don't, we don't want to buy anything from China, or we don't want to buy anything from further country like Eastern Europe, for example, because for example, you know, or you may not know that there's a few countries who are com coming up right now, like Romania, for example, a very interesting country in terms of shoemaking. Um, uh, Hungary also, they yes. have always been incredible. Oh, yeah. Eastern Europe also are there. And so what I wanted to say first is that when I knew we were going to do something together, I said, oh, I have to find some American brown made in America. Because maybe some people here are sensitive to that. You know, they want to buy something which is made in their mm -hmm. country. And then, um, well, of course, I thought about the two big elephants in the <laughs> porcelain shop, you know, yeah. Alden and oh, Alan Elmond, yeah. because these are the two which we in Europe and in Paris, we know about. Mm -hmm. And I've been making a lot of different selections and I never selected Alan Edmonds, and I received, I could say, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, well, I would say, um, bad comments or <laughs> very, how do you say that, very insistent questions. Of, what about Alan Edmonds? Are you some kind of racist with the US made? <laughs> now, I remember I reading some of the comments on yeah. one of your videos because I watched it myself yes. and I went and I started reading the comments and you were getting, you were getting hit yeah, by people saying, was, what about was, Alan Edmonds? So. And I was just saying, and I can declare it officially. Now I have nothing yeah. against Alan Edmonds. No. Uh, you probably know the bronze much better than I do. The only thing is that for my taste, everything is subjective, sure. right? Oh, yeah. So for my taste, the last, were very puffy, very round, very... When I look at Alan Edmonds' shoe, I'm sorry to say, I see a big, tall guy. Yep. But me, I'm, I'm not that big and I'm not tall. And when I put my... I don't see myself into this. Though It's such a matter of style. But we had a talk about that and so recently I heard that Alan Edmonds was e extraordinary quality back in the years. Mm -hmm. And that, as far as we know, the quality dropped a little bit. So I don't know if you have information or if you want to go into that subject. But uh, for me, uh, I, I don't know Alan Edmonds sufficiently from a quality standpoint to judge their work. But uh, do you have something to say about that? Sure. Yeah. So, you know, as a lot of you guys know, Alan Edmonds is probably one of the biggest brands that we receive in our shop. Yep. Um, we resold a lot of Alan Edmonds. I own quite a few Alan Edmonds shoes myself. Um, but one of the things that we've noticed with Alan Edmonds and yep. that we hear in comment sections on blogs is just the quality level has, has decreased over the years because Alan Edmonds has been bought and sold, bought and sold. Yep. And, um, to a financial and, and group, you, I Yeah, and you know that once that starts happening, quality generally starts going down. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, we'll get old Alan Edmonds from the 90s, from the 80s that come into our shop, and we'll get you a lot of a new ones, and you can, you can tell, tell a difference. difference. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, it's the little, the little touches that, uh, the sanding along the edges may not be as smooth as most of the other shoes in that same price category. Mm -hmm. Uh, the stench dis density along the, uh, the sole and the welt is, you know, nowhere near what it used to be, you yeah. know, 20, 30 years ago. The quality of the, the leather on the sole <laughs> is changed. Uh, we, there used to be, um, I'm, and I'm drawing a blank on the name of the, the company, but they went out of business in the, I want to say the nineties and, mm -hmm. um, We'll crack open a shoe, and you can. They're stamped up underneath the heel. Okay. The U.S. used to make some pretty good sole leather know, back in the day, know, yeah. and um, I, my guess is Alan Emmons had bought their stock when they were closing down. They grabbed it. They used it for as long as they could until they ran out, and you can tell. Wow, this is the original sole, and I can tell this is an old shoe, and it's just now coming in okay. to be resold. The prices, so you say the quality dropped a little bit, but the price it didn't drop. They, the price did not. Yeah, that's so, also and, and the, this is what yeah. I've also noticed with Allen Edmonds is they um, 
they're still priced around the $400 price point, okay. but they run sales continuously throughout okay. the year. And wow. if you're going to buy an Allen Edmonds, now I will say this, I do think the quality of Allen Edmonds has dropped uh, drastically from what mm -hmm. they used to have. Mm -hmm. But for the gentlemen who, and, and we receive questions a lot from guys that have bigger feet. Yes. Uh, I'm a size mm -hmm. 15, I'm a size triple yeah. E. I can't, I can't, in the width. exactly. Yeah. And I can't yeah. fit a lot of those brands that you're recommending. Yeah. Um, Allen Edmonds has my size. And that is one of the great things I will say about Allen Edmonds is yes. they have been around so long, their last uh, sizes are just so vast that they can fit most men's feet. Specifically um, in the US. Correct. Yeah. So that does help a lot. Um, the other thing is when it comes to repairability, yeah. Um, like I said, we receive so many Allen Edmonds and it is it is a very easy, easy shoe to resole. So I will give them bonus points yes, uh, in too. those two aspects. Me too, me too. And so one of the great things, uh, another great thing about Allen Edmonds is they're very easy to resole. Yes. And you know we receive hundreds of them a year and it only takes you know an hour to resole these shoes, and one of the great things is if you send them in to us or your other cobbler, a lot of times we can upgrade it. So while the stitch density may not be as great from the Allen Edmonds factory, yeah. you know we can make all those little fine adjustments that used to be on an old Allen Edmonds. Mm -hmm. It's no problem for us to redo. And my question is, uh, it's uh, it's so obvious that they have fantastic history. Yeah. They have um, a collection of lots which is outstanding, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, they have a big power of, of, of uh, possibility to buy some nice skins and nice leather. So it means that if they really want to be back at the same level of quality, it's not big changes they have to, to make. They just took some shortcuts a little bit. That, this is what you were explaining, a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not that, that difficult to fix. Uh, some cheaper materials, um, yeah. and, and like in the blocks, yes. um, that you know, cut some corners there. but. If you're gonna do that, I haven't seen a drop in the price to match that. Okay, that's okay. that's Other the key. Than all of the sales yeah. They, they do do a lot of sales. Yes, and that is the thing. If you are wanting to go in that direction, you I have you have the ability to buy numerous um, seconds yeah. sales, so you can get that you know four hundred dollars shoe two for cool. for two hundred. So yeah, because they, they constantly. Constantly yes. having So if you're sales. going to buy Allen Edmonds, I always tell people, wait until the sales yeah. come out. Okay. Yeah. And it's still a very good deal. It's still, yeah. yeah. For around, yeah, for around 250 to three, it's still a good shoe that, yeah. again, will, it's, you can resole it over and over. So it's a shoe that you'll keep for years to come. Okay. So I'm happy we had this discussion about Allen Edmonds because for the first time, I'm going to show this on my channel also. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, all our viewers from the US, they are, that will be, now you have the answer. I don't like the style of Allen Edmonds. I didn't know much about the quality. I know that was very decent. To yes. say. We can say it's still very decent very quality, decent. Yep. but that the, the, the people who wear Allen Edmonds, um, you know, aficionados, they noticed that the quality dropped a little sure. bit. So, oh, well, Allen Edmonds, if you listen to us, uh, we love what you do, and maybe there's a little bit uh, that you can do to bring back some quality, because the thing they may, may not know is that the public, you have 350,000 followers on this channel. We have, uh, if we mix the French and the English, 230,000. And probably, I would say a million people all together. Um, well, it means that this million people, they are more educated than yeah, they yeah. used to be. And this is why brands now are pushed by the market sometimes. This, mm -hmm. this new upcoming crowd, everybody says it's all about sneakers now and comfort. No, 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 no. it's not true. Uh, how can you explain that so many browns are, you know, every morning I discover a new brown yeah, almost, yeah, you know? Yeah. So if it were a dying market, you would not discover a new brown every morning. No. On the contrary, there's something is happening. A new generation is discovering the pleasure yeah, yeah. of a nice shoe, of beautiful uh, leather, of this impression of being, you know, al almost a new man when you, when you wear this kind of stuff. And there's a message also for Allen and Munz and this company who are very established. Yep. You're going to be challenged by young men who know now what a Blake yep. stitching in, what a, a Goodyear stitching is, what, what a hand velted shoe is. They, they start to know. And sure. so it, it should push. We have the same problem in the tie industry. You know, nobody yes. wears ties anymore. I mean, a little bit. But now the people who are wearing tie, they wear a tie not because they have to wear a tie, it's because they love to wear a tie. Yep. So this is not the same public. And all of a sudden, all the crappy, Tie maker disappeared, of course, mm -hmm. no more business. Sure. You know? mm -hmm. But the high quality 
seven-fold, eleven-fold, twelve-fold, with a lot of silk, a lot of technicity into the tie. They all of a sudden, there's a new market of people who are passionate with this. And I think in the shoe industry is the same what is happening. I don't know if you, you, you see this with yes, your clientele. Absolutely. Yeah, I do think there's a, a renaissance yes. movement mm -hmm. going right now. And I think uh, just as you mentioned, not only because of uh, like channels like ours and yours and others out there that are educating the public, yep. unlike as they've ever been educated before. You know, mm -hmm. before channels like I, all of ours came together, you know, I, I didn't know. Even yeah. I was the same way. You know, yeah. I was like, I'll just go to the mall and get myself a nice yeah. pair of shoes. You I didn't. Did. You didn't know quality. Yeah. And you're now because of all of our channels, we're educating the public. A lot of the younger people. I hear this all the time from the was it Generation Z now. Yeah. These folks are growing up and they're saying, you know what? I'm tired of throwing all my stuff in landfills. I'm tired of the just the cheap disposable. Give me quality. And that's why I hear from so many of the younger folks that are going to vintage stores, buying nice old shoes, buying nice old clothes, oh, of course. and they want to keep them and I eBay's like you said an uptick. they are you know <laughs> yeah, it's just a, right. there's a rejuvenation amongst everything style wise mm -hmm. shoes wise yeah. and so manufacturers and not to mention the big manufacturers are in now competition with a lot of the folks we're going to talk about exactly. today so you're either going to have to step up your game yes. or you're going to lose out on business exactly exactly so let's step up into the so i wanted to make sure that everybody understood that about allen and Munz. there's another brand that we like in europe from your country's alden but it's a little bit yes. above the 500 price tag that we spoke about. Yeah. And they're famous mainly for their cordovan leather, mm -hmm. which is horse leather, right? Yes. And uh, it's beautiful shoes, I have nothing to say, but they're not in our target for two. And they also are known also for, uh, we're talking about Allen Emmons fitting multiple size feet. Yeah. They do a two measurement. Uh, they do a heel width and they do a, um, up at the, the ball of the foot, they'll oh. take. So that is for people who have kind of an odd size foot width wise, that is one that they can they can go to if yeah. they okay. like that. So. Okay. so let's start. Uh, I, I made a list. It may not be in the right order, but That's it doesn't okay. really matter. Okay. I'm going to try. I'm sorry, everybody, if sometime I, I, I a little bit struggle. First of all, you have to remember I'm French. <laughs> so English is not my mother tongue, even if I speak fluently. But um, I'm, I'm always very concerned about, about, about if it, do you detect my accent? I suppose you do. You're perfectly fine. You just, you just talk <laughs> weevil. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it's funny for me. So you have to remember, and you have to remember also that I speak not only in euros and not in dollars. Yes. And it's going to be a little bit more complicated because some of the brands that I, I'm going to speak about, there are maybe some discoveries for you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking about one which is located in Singapore and they speak in Sing Singapore dollars. Mm -hmm. So it's becoming a little bit, you know, yeah. tricky to have the right price. But, but the, the, the thing to remember is like we said, guys, every yeah. shoe brand that we mention, most of these shoes are between two and $500. Exactly, you know? exactly. So go look them up and you'll you'll be able to see what price. So I will are. start with uh, one which is for me probably the best value on the market right now. And so it's a big uh, statement that I'm doing, but it's among the best value for, I would say the entry line. Mm -hmm. For us, uh, well, it's like in wine. I'm a wine amateur. I'm, co I'm collecting wines. Uh, we live in Bourgogne, close to Chablis. So of course, it's the right place to live. And I, I was always told by my grandfather and my father, he said, they said to me, you know, you go, there's a technical point. Having a great bottle of wine under 10 bucks, it's just impossible. You can have some, you know, wine has been trafficked a little bit, put a little bit, add some stuff. You know, mm. in America, they go as far as adding some microscopic wood chips inside the wine so that it can sound like it's been aging in a barrel <laughs> for 10 years, but it's just directly, they put the wood directly in the wine, okay? So I remember my father and my grandfather telling me, so you go, technically, it's impossible to have what we call a great wine in front, you know, it's, like, it's a culture for us. Under 10, 15 bucks, honestly, uh, uh, you can have some kind of a decent wine, but not a great one. It's the same for shoes. Yeah, sure. I think for me, the, the cut is under 180, I would say 160, 180. Absolutely. Forget about it. Yeah. Forget I about agree. it because it's ridiculous to save 40 <clears throat> bucks. And then not being able to resole your shoe in, in three years or not to, to being able to maintain your shoe to wear them, you know. It's better to spend a little bit more upfront but then you can have them for, uh, well, I would say a long time is not a lifetime. It's a decent good year that you can be resold by people like you. So it can last a long time. So for me, 
one of the, if not the best um, value on the market, is from Singapore. So the brand, they call it CNES. I have no idea why. <laughs> it's, it's probably an acronym of a company of a new establishment shoot, I don't know, CNES. So we're gonna put pictures as B-roll because I, don't, yeah. I, did, I, didn't, I couldn't bring all the shoes because of my um, luggage would have been oversized <laughs> otherwise, as you can yeah. imagine. It's okay, we'll okay. show pictures of all of this. They are in I'm Singapore. Sure. Uh, they are doing a very decent job, beautiful. Yeah. I think they are, for their loafers, uh, at $150, something like that. And for their Oxfords and derbies and boots, they're around, I would say 250, something like that. 250, 290, which is an incredible value. Absolutely. When you're gonna see the shoes, they are incredible. So they use some ancient techniques like wood pegging sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, the blind stitching can be a little bit complicated to do. So they do wood pegging. So it's a little bit of shortcut, but it's stylish oh, yeah. shortcuts. And you know? I'm, I'm actually a big fan because yeah. I lo I'm a boot guy. Yes. And there's just something about seeing through the waist Yes. Some, some pegs, some pegs and they're nice and beautiful. Huh? It is, and they're nice and polished. Um, it's, it's very old school, yeah. and yeah. it's got an elegance to it. Exactly. It's got a rich history, yeah, and exactly. you know, military shoes and boots. And, yes. Now, see, yeah. this was a brand that you we did not know about, yes. and you introduced us to us, and we were looking over their website, looking at the shoes, yeah. and I agree with you. Absolutely beautiful. For that price point, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And with, there are cobblers initially, so they repair also. So they have this culture, you know, they, they are initially, so it's, I think it's three guys who, who, who joined to create this company. So it's men in Vietnam. We, we may, you may or may not know that Vietnam is a very interesting place for shoes. Yes. Not only for labor cost, yeah. because they have some know-how and they have some technicity there. Mm -hmm. And honestly, everything I've seen from them are, were absolutely fantastic. I agree. Okay, you have to understand everybody, ladies and gentlemen, if you order from CNES, we live in 2022, you can have to, you may have to add some customs, right? You know, this is a little bit tricky these days, specifically uh, when we receive something from the USA there, well, I think it's a little bit better now, but you have to add maybe like 20, 30 bucks of customs and a little bit of shipment, but sure. it's still a fantastic value, CNES Absolutely. in Singapore. Then, well, I suppose you spoke about Mermin here on this channel, yeah. yes. made in China by uh, the family uh, of a, a, a Spanish family, Albaratejo, you know, from the Mallorca Island. Mm -hmm. Okay, still an excellent value. Mm -hmm. I will give you a secret. We've been talking about Mermin and made them worldwide famous. I talk about Mermin since the beginning and we don't know them. Mm -hmm. Isn't it crazy? Yeah. We, uh, they opened two stores, I think, in Paris now. Yes, They've they become an blown. enormous they have, brand. Blown up over yeah, years. we've been helped helping them, I and mean, we've been talking about them since, I would say, the beginning, mm -hmm. six, seven years, and we never met them. So it's funny because so many people say, oh, you have contract with, the no, we don't even know them. We yeah. never met them. And, and, but I had those shoes in hand, okay, around 200, a little bit under, around 200 around bucks, 200. okay. Uh, okay, not perfect. Sometimes there's a little bit of a, it's not, taught. The, the quality of leather can be, a little bit mm -hmm. up and down. Mm -hmm. The finishing can be a little bit shortcutting here and there because you, you know this product yeah. quite well, but I, I, I think you agree with me for, for, the, for the price. The value Absolutely. is still very, very Yeah, good. for the what value, you uh, we, it's, I think we know we've done a, a teardown of uh, okay. Miramin review before and we've gotten quite a few Miramin shoes sent to us here in our shop to resole. Mm -hmm. And uh, I agree with you, uh, I think we were quite blown away by Mirmen when they first came in and we were taking them apart because like you said, they're around 200 at the time. This was maybe a couple of years ago yeah. and you were getting stacked leather heel blocks. You were getting combination blind leather heel, yeah, blind some stitch, stuff. some great stuff. And yeah. I believe J, JR Souls were even offered on some of them. So yes. it was incredible for what you were getting for the price tag. Uh, but like you said, there are some uh, you know, minor flaws here and there, you know, yeah. things that you would not get with a higher end shoe, yeah. but for $200, fantastic A little bit shoe. longer break-in period, I yeah. found. Yeah, they're very stiff. Very stiff. Yeah. Very stiff. And we heard about with Sonia, so that is the yeah. one main complaint we have yeah. about. So, I have a question for you, speaking about stiffness. Do you know how long it takes to break in a shoe properly? Do you have an idea about that? That's a good question. I don't know, I guess how long. Well, I spoke about this with a guy you may, I'm sure you know, is Paolo Scafora in, in Italy, one of mm -hmm. 
his Norwegian stitched shoes are incredible. But we're not speaking, they're around $2,000 or something like that. It's an incredible shoe. And he's been in all his life in shoes. So he said, I've been measuring this. I can tell you very, I'm very sure of myself. It's 24 hours of actual wear. That would make sense. 24 hours of actual wear, you have, you break your shoes in. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's the time it takes. I'm not taking one day of, of no, no, 24 hours. That yeah. would, would make, I would say, three days, four days yeah. to really have yeah. them. And you know? it's important to just take it baby steps. Exactly. You know, you don't have to put on this brand new pair of shoes and wear it all day. You yeah. may get blisters, but take it in baby steps and exactly. break it up. Exactly. And after that, oh, it's going to yeah. fit. And like also a, a reason why you want a shoe that's got a lot of natural, um, like a leather insole, because yeah. it's yeah. flexible. It breathes. It takes in oils. It takes in sweat. And exactly. it molds. Yeah. Exactly. So exactly. cork. Exactly. So that's Mermin. So it's funny that we have the same, the same feedback we have is stiffness. Yeah. And, okay, sometimes it's not totally the same kind of, uh, you know, consistency is everything in is his job. And there may like a little bit of consistency, but honestly, still a fantastic still value. Yeah. Uh, well. Then the third one I wanted to, to speak about is uh, our friend Justin Fitzpatrick that you probably know, the yes. shoe snob. Justin, a uh, little story about Justin is, we know Justin since he's a boy, and we can say that, right? He <laughs> was... We met him uh, on Savile Row at Gives and Oaks, one Savile Row back in uh, 2012, 11, 12. He was a shoe shiner there. I remember, yeah. Yeah, he was our good friend. And we we would take him outside to have dinner with us. And he he would tell us, oh, I have a dream. I want to create my brand and everything. And and we were cocooning him because he is a good friend, you know. And so now, uh, what's 10 years later, now he's, he's been doing a lot of good things. So to clarify, he was in the UK at the time, and then he was, uh, he was trained under Stefano Bemmer in Italy, so he knows a lot about shoes, sure. as you can tell, of course. And then he, he created his brand, and now he's in New York. And as far as I know, he has online sale, as usual, but he yeah. also has a brick-and-mortar shop now in yes. New York City. Uh, and so Justin just launched uh, a line, or just launched, I would say, last year. Um, it's called the JL. JF, Justin Fitzpatrick, JF line. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> disclaimer, J is G in French and G is J. So sometimes I'm sorry, so J, F line, which is, we'll just look before it was around 200, 200, around 200 for, 250, yeah, 250. I mean, another great brand. I mean, we've been very impressed by, you know, Justin's shoe brand yeah. over the years. You know, we've gotten to work on a lot of those too. Yeah. And uh, just a great overall shoe. Yeah. And then uh, as you had mentioned, He's now has a new line yes. that's brought it down even lower exactly. in price. So exactly. absolute, yeah, absolute Until steel. Line. Yeah, and it's a steel. And on top of that, his customer service is going doing better and better. And so it's a very safe to go to yeah. Justin. So I wanted to, to add something about Justin Fitzpatrick. So you may or may not know that uh, he's crafting in Spain. And this is something that people have to understand. Um, Justin has a store in New York. So his stock of shoes is in the USA. So it is a U.S. brand, but it is crafted in Spain, in Almansa, close to Albacete, in the south east of, um, of Spain, which is one of the biggest cradles sure. for shoemaking with Northampton in the U.K. Uh, and, and, uh, but it means that there's another brand that we're going to talk later, it's Cobbler Union, same thing, U.S. brand crafted in Spain, because Spain is becoming yeah. one of the, the key countries. It's a hot country for yes. shoes. And that's pretty much just the way it's going right now is they're Spain and a um, few places in Asia, yeah. but you're Portugal. not, you're not getting a whole lot of uh, new factories popping up here in no. the U S yeah. no. you know, which is, you don't, you're not getting them. So no. these companies have to go somewhere and the skill, the artisans, they're there. Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, we can say there are, in my opinion, there are four major countries now in terms of, of shoe crafting. I mean, with real factories. So Spain is probably number one now because mm-hmm. it, for all, most of the brands, except the UK brands, of course, but most of the brands are made in Spain now. Uh, you have Portugal, which mm-hmm. is a very interesting country. Yep. And uh, very, and specifically Carlos Santos, we're going to speak about him. A mm-hmm. lot of know-how, and Portuguese people are inc- incredible. Well, we French, we love Portuguese because it's a, it's a long story, yeah, we, you know, <laughs> of uh, immigration <laughs> in our country. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool, it's cool, but it's very interesting. Then you have, of course, the UK with mm-hmm. Northampton, which is the cradle of yes. shoemaking, you know, in, um, in, the, in the UK. And then you have uh, Italy, 
uh, who's been one of the cradle of shoemaking, but uh, now they are a little bit specializing, fortunately or unfortunately, depending if you like this or not, on sneakers. Yes. And sneakers from made in Italy are quite good quality, yep. actually, these days. And so really Barcelona known to the same, the sneakers. I'm sorry? The, the sneaker industry is, it's, is another big kind of it's booming. It's yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's booming. But we'll, we, we're not, maybe we'll talk of this on another episode because I have so many things to say about that. that, okay. that now you're going to have, well, we have some shoemakers, bespoke shoemakers who are specializing in bespoke sneakers now in Paris, and they do it by hand. And for example, there's an atelier, incredible atelier called Atelier Clairvoy. It is owned by the Moulin Rouge. Can you believe that? You know the Moulin Rouge, yeah, the cabaret, yes. a very famous Moulin Rouge. Okay, the Moulin Rouge, they have shoemaker inside the Moulin Rouge. Why? Because they have dancers who ah. spend three or four hours on stage every day. That's so those people need to have Great really shoes. comfortable shoes, yeah. you know, and they don't go into with their sneakers on stage or they, they, they have a woman have high heels. And, and so they make all by hand and they decided to launch a sneaker collection all by hand. Huh. It's incredible. You design your own. So, okay, it's 750 a pair. It's expensive, but this is unique in the world. And you have another one in France, Atelier du Tranché, the brother of Pierre Corté, Christophe Corté. He's doing some crazy, crazy sneakers. They are in, my, in our book. They have a page in our book. And uh, same thing for 850, made by hand in Paris. So there's something is happening in the sneaker industry. That is to say, I was afraid, like so many purists, that uh, the sneaker will, will steal our stuff. And I just realized that the contrary is happening, is that mm -hmm. our business is going into the sneaker industry. And I wear today, I can't show them now, but I wear today sneakers that are made in real leather. Yes. And it's really stylish. I mean, so, so it means it's, it's the reverse. I yeah. think that the, the sneaker industry has moved towards more quality, even if, in my opinion, it still has some progress to make. But it's, it's very interesting. Next, so Fitzpatrick, Justin Fitzpatrick, the GF line. Uh, also, he's got a wealth of knowledge on his blog. Oh. Yes. And yeah. um, the, the shoe snob. snob, the shoe snob. Yeah. So, the shoe snob yeah. Com. Yeah. I love to read it. <laughs> I do too. I've gone on the shoe snob quite yeah. a bit yeah. uh, over the years to look yeah. up information. Hey, so. Justin. Uh, it's, uh, you don't know. We are recording this and we are quoting your name. You're going to discover it. It's my way. It's our way. We know each other since a long time, but I never tell him when I'm going to speak about him. So it's going to, I <laughs> want him, I want, yeah, yeah. I, I want him to discover. But he's a good guy. He's a wealth of knowledge and he's a wonderful man on top of that, which is, which is often the case in our industry, by the way. There's a lot yeah. of good people. Very true. I don't know why. Because we are grounded, because we have the hand on the leather. I don't know why. It's that artisan aspect. I think yes. you you know what goes into that work of art, and yes. you you're very appreciative of that. I think I it's think. almost like one giant guild. Yes. You yeah. know? Yes. Yes. And I never, I rarely heard uh, quality shoemakers bad mouthing other shoemakers. I agree. Pretty much never. Yep. Because it's kind of a brotherhood, I would say, a kind of an agreement, but they know how, how much efforts it needs sure. to do a proper Goodyear shoe. This is a lot of efforts. Yep. Number four, okay, let's go a little bit in the UK. You know Loke, I suppose. Yes, yeah. Okay, so look, they have different, um, different uh, ranges, of course, mm -hmm. different lines. I know that the entry line is made in India. That's what I know. But they also have a lot which is made in the UK. So mm -hmm. I think they start a little bit under 200 bucks. Yes. And then they can go up to 300, 400, but it's still very reliable. You had an experience with this? Before? Yeah, so uh, yeah. you know, from the cobbler's aspect, um, Loke is another brand that we've received quite a few of over the years. Yeah. And uh, it's always, it's been a brand that we've been recommending uh, okay. for, oh. for folks that are starting out looking within this price point. Okay. Another great quality shoe yeah. uh, that can be resold over and over again. Yes. And uh, definitely one that we would recommend as well. So we all, we are, we are all vote, voting for Loke Absolutely. because they are great people. Also, we are, we are in the same area, Herring. Mm -hmm. I suppose you, you know them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Herring is a kind of a weird company because uh, originally there were distributors for big brands like, um, like Edward Green, like, you know, a lot of big brands. And then they decided to, to make their own range of shoe. There's one thing which is good in Herring. Okay, the shoes are same thing, decent quality, between two and 300, something like that, mm -hmm. because they have different lines, bench made, hand grade, different lines. But Globally, you can find something that is good at Herring. What I like with these people, they have a, an international reputation for their customer service, and they are kind. That's what we know. I don't know if you had contact with them. They're very, very, uh, very uh, interesting people in terms of care. You know, they I care. think that's such an important, you know, part of it too, especially for folks that are 
you know, in today's world, so much online ordering. Oh so, you know, I think that's one of the big things a lot of you guys say is, you know, I don't know, I, I need to try these shoes on. I don't know how they fit. How's the customer service? You know, yes. these are all questions that we receive. So it's always good to know these brands, you know, which it ones are also have good customer service. Fundamental, because uh, the thing is that oh, today, I mean, most of the business is going online. Sure. It's uh, probably one of the specialty, which is the most difficult to buy online is a shoe. Okay, a suit is the same. It's complex to mm -hmm. buy online, but it's only all the time. It's the first order is complicated. Sure, because once you figure it out, yeah. then yeah. after you yeah. figure out your size, your yeah. width, and a lot of times it's based upon which last they're using. If you exactly. look in a lot of the re, uh, the reviews or whatever the comment section on a lot of these brands, yes. folks will you know give you know their take on what their experience is like. You know, if I wear the E last or this last, where I ordered this style, yes. I would go with this size. So a lot of folks were all helping each other out, and exactly. a lot of that information can be yes. found on just a quick Google search. Yeah, and I think also that's what has been harming the big brands mm -hmm. that we talked about at the beginning is that they didn't realize the amount of customer care that was put into this lesser known brand and smaller companies, but they're considered, I know Justin Fitzpatrick, when he sends a shoe, he knows where he is, he knows to who he's sending it, he knows almost the, the size of the guys, he knows everything. And that changed everything, yes. you know, because you have a real relationship with the, with the not with a brand, some kind of a smoke screen, but with some real people. Because a lot of these brands, again, are just, you know, a lot of these, I wouldn't say startups, but they yeah. haven't been around very long. So, you know, as two guys that also own a, a brand, yeah. it's, you know, you really look after that customer, you know, because we're you're new, you're starting out, and you want that customer to spread the great word. So, exactly. you know, unlike a you know multi-million dollar brand, you're going to take you know, good care of that customer. And, and uh, exactly. so that's another reason I like a lot of these brands. Exactly. The next one I wanted to quote is Joseph Chine that you probably also have... You got Knowledgeable. Yeah. Uh, received a few yeah, over the years, but not a lot, but I'm very, you know, familiar with the You know the, the story brand. of Joseph Chine a little bit? Or? I do not. Oh, you do not? I would love to hear oh, it. okay. Uh, Joseph Chine has been, um, well, it's a revival. Uh, it's been, uh, so you know churches? Yeah, sure. Oh, okay, you say church or churches? Church, church, uh, church, church. Well, yes, it, because normally it's, it's a church, S. and then yeah, it's a pair yeah. of churches. Okay, yeah. so church, which was the gold standard when I was younger. Yeah. I'm, I'm older than you, but in the mid 1980s, in France, you were either a church guy or a Western guy. You okay. have to be, you know, me. I, I, I managed to be both, but uh, you know, I was buying my shoes secondhand or second foot. I don't know how you say that, but and I, I started with churches. I was mesmerized by churches, and then they dropped a little bit in quality when they were bought out by the Prada Group. Mm -hmm. uh, Joseph Chine is a very old company that has been bought by the two church brothers. Mm -hmm. When they sold to Prada, and then, or I don't know if they're brothers or cousins, but the church, mm -hmm. the heirs of the church company, they sold to Prada. And then, you know, shoes is, is a kind of trade in which you can't stay very far from it for sure. a while if, you are, <laughs> if you're born in it, you know? Yeah. And so this is what happened. And so it's been bought by the church brothers. So it's a spin-off of church now. It's the new family company of church sure. family is Joseph So Chine. they have that yeah. heritage. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So they continued the story of Chine, and I've been looking specifically for women, actually. They do a lot of fantastic boots for women also, like combat boots, you know. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a little bit puffy, but very sexy, you know, when it's really well, well um, uh, assorted with some kind of good denim, or even Sonia is wearing this with suits. It's very, sure. very... I like it a lot, but they do also very decent uh, Oxford and Derbys, and it's a beautiful brand. I think it's more in the four hundred dollars, mm -hmm. but it's still very good. And I will have also I have two other UK brands that I love. Well, they're not exactly in the you know very uh, posh thing. They're more like outside or it's uh, Granson and Trickers. Yes, Granson, very good brand, also in the four hundred. I would say. Better known for their very sturdy brogs, robust. you know, robust, you know, grunson, so fantastic, and trickers. Trickers, if you want to kick the ass of somebody, wear some trickers <laughs> yeah. because it's going to happen. When I see trickers, I always picture like the British Highlands. Exactly. You know? yeah. You're going, You're going on, a, on a pheasant hunt, yeah. Yeah. you yeah. know. And, and, and into the heather, you know, so exactly. it's, yeah. if you but, but your shoes will survive. They will yeah. survive. And you're sporting yeah. tweed. Yeah, yeah. yeah of you, course. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And a, a tweed cap, <laughs> yeah. you if know, you and the, the right suit. rifle. Yes. And we call it a Norfolk jacket. It's a, it's a hunting jacket yeah. of yeah. The, the former century, you know, with this strap here, with a, a, a cap 
and a pair of triggers, and yeah. you're all set. Did yes. we, I think we just painted the ultimate picture for triggers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's a fantastic shoe. It is great shoe. And, this is, and, and it's, it's more than robust. I mean, it's yeah. almost unbreakable if you, are, if you take great care of it. We received a beautiful pair of triggers just a couple of weeks ago that we yeah. resold for gentlemen. And I mean, it's funny. He sent them in, looked like they had barely been worn, and he just wanted to have the leather soles put on, oh. the day-night soles. But what a, what a beautiful boot this was. Um, and it, to your point, totally indestructible. I mean, exactly. they, they are made yeah. for that, that the guy that's wanting to walk around the highlands or yeah. whatever and just, exactly. you know, it, it takes a beating. Exactly. But again, a, a boot or a shoe that falls within that price range that's affordable for, you know, a lot of folks. Yes, exactly. So it's uh, fantastic. Um, I'd like also to quote a French brand called Septième Largeur. Septième Largeur, this is French. It means seventh width. Largeur, it's width. Septième Largeur. Um, the founder is a guy called Mathieu Price, he's a good friend of us. He's, he's in, same thing, uh, same business model as Justin, they know each other very well, because you know, it's a small world. Sure. And so, uh, French brown, crafted in Spain, in Almansa. Actually, I'm not sure if it's in the same factory as Justin, probably a neighbor factory, but in the same street for sure. <laughs> because this is a cradle in Almansa, you have, uh, I don't know, Many, many, many factories is the same as Northampton. These are the two last of the Mohicans, you know, and also in the Marsh region in Italy, you still have a few ateliers. But otherwise, it's, it's really this spot. So, uh, septième largeur, great price, 245 euros. Mm -hmm. I know exactly 245 because all the shoes are the, the same price, pretty much. Yeah. They have, an, uh, except for the loafers, one, one, 180. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, when I speak about in euros, you have to add these days, 15%, sure. something like yeah. that, to make the price in US dollars. But Septième Largeur, we're gonna show you pictures, is uh, beautiful, beautifully yeah. made. It was another brand that you were showing me yeah. before we came and on here, and uh, again, I agree. Same thing, beautiful. Uh, customer service, incredible. Yeah. No problem, they are really shoe people, and they you know, understand. And they are developing online a lot. In Paris, they have three stores, and they have a store in Taiwan. So they are developing mm -hmm. little by little, but this is a great, great company. Then Portugal, we talk about Portugal, Carlos Santos. So Carlos Santos, I know you had some Carlos Santos in your hand yes, already. Yes, yes? Mm -hmm. great stuff. Uh, again, yeah, another yeah. another shoe that we've resold a lot of. Um, yeah. Very, very nice quality. Very the nice uppers, quality. the soles, yeah, yeah, it's beautiful shoes. The thing with Carlos Santos is that you probably have been working on more Carlos Santos than you can imagine because he's doing a lot of private labels. Mm -hmm. Labels, private labels. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm struggling labels. with labels. labels yes. Private labels, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> I tried to speak Southern. Hello, y'all. You're go. going to be very happy. Perfect, yes, perfect. perfect. Yeah. Pri private labels. labels. And uh, I'm, I'm struggling with It's funny, it makes everybody <laughs> laugh around me all the time. Uh, so, yeah, Carlos Santos for me, it's, it's, uh, it's around 400, same kind of 300, 400. Some, some ranges are a little bit above, but they used to have a hand grade. It was incredible. Incredible for the price. Mm. So it's a fantastic, and Portugal is a very interesting country for shoemaking, but for other stuff like sure. wine, for example. So we agree on Carlos Santos, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, then only three or four to go. Uh, uh, American brand that you probably know. Okay, we, we've been speaking, I think we were the first to speak about them when they were not even, I think they were created since one week. I don't know how. I stumbled upon one pair of them. It's called the Union in Atlanta. You know mm -hmm. them very well. Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, we've been supporting them since a long time because we really wanted to have a brand in, in the US. They are American, yep. mm -hmm. made in Almansa. Same, same place, <laughs> same place as uh, Septième Largeur, as Justin Fitzpatrick is about. You know, it's, it's the cradle. Mm -hmm. And I think they, are, they were under 400 recently. Uh, yeah, I think around 400. Yeah. Um, you know, it may some, may some, yeah. <laughs> some may go up. Yeah. Some may be actually a little yeah, bit lower, they're, I they're, believe, they're, but they're, they're around the 400 ballpark. Ball ball Between three and 400, yes. let's say, for mm -hmm. sure. So you have a good experience with them also. Yeah, so yeah, uh, yeah I remember uh, your video where you went and, and spoke oh, to yeah. uh, the owner. Is, yeah, one we of your first. Down, right? yeah. <laughs> they, and they have a brick and mortar in Atlanta. Yeah, so you guys went there. We also went down there and we have a video where we went and spoke to them and visited their shop. Yeah. Uh, we've always been very impressed with uh, Cobbler Union. Yeah. Um, I, I own several pairs myself. I love them. Yeah. Uh, very nice quality shoes. And, and uh, nice people. Very nice. The customer service, uh, I, I you know, will not lie, the customer, customer service with Cobbler Union is one, one of the best. Yeah. Of the best. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. We all agree on that. And yeah. it's, uh, so same thing, crafted in Spain, but have a team in Spain. Yeah. It's funny because we call it the Daniels because I think there are three Daniels 
in the, the head of the company. Yeah. So I don't know, is Daniel, which Daniel? Yeah. You know, because yeah. there's a lot of Daniel. So they are nice people, a couple of you know, they have a brick and mortar shop in Atlanta. Yeah. And, uh, and of course they say online, they, they even have a, um, uh, an online shop in French because of course, mm -hmm. Well, we've been speaking of them, so their sales went up very fast in France. Yeah. And then we've been doing a lot of things. So it remains extremely good. And then we have this uh, very specific place, very interesting place. First of all, it's beautiful. It's, um, uh, it's um, Mallorca Island. Yeah. Okay, there are three islands. In, it's called the Balearic Island. It's, at, it's uh, close to Spain. It's Spanish, actually. And the most famous is Ibiza for other reasons. This is where you dance and you have a lot of, uh, you know, this is a very, it's a jet set area. Yes, yes. But then you have Mallorca is more, uh, I would say more family place and they, they have an enormous uh, industry of shoes there yeah, because shoes you have the three, yeah. three main factories. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being Lotusse. Uh, I'm not sure they even ship to the US these people, but they are great. And Sonia will speak about it maybe with you later or another time because they do some beautiful shoes for women. Mm -hmm. uh, Oxfords and mm -hmm. derbies for women with really feminine lasts. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So Lutuse, and I would say probably in the same area, not in, if not in the same street, Carmina, that yes. you know very well from uh, Palma, uh, the Mallorca. So it's, it's exactly, the, the town is called Inca. So they have a real know-how here. Same thing, I would say, in the between 300 and 500, mm -hmm. depending on the range. Do you have a good uh, experience with Carmina also? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we we both own a couple, several pairs yeah, ourselves. We've, we've worked with them a couple of times. Yeah, and we've yeah. resold quite a number of Carminas. Yeah. Um, again, very Excellent high quality. Price. Yeah, and yeah. other folks that we follow within the, the shoe realm, yeah. I, everyone says the same thing, you know, outstanding quality. Okay, yeah. okay. And then the last one is TLB, of course, yes. uh, Tony Lobiera that we all know. Yeah. Same thing. Uh, it's a little bit smaller than Carmina, yeah. but I'm, I would say it's, it's comparable in quality. Of course, of course, uh, TLB would say they do this better than Carmina, and Carmina would say we do this better than TLB, but uh, at the end of the day, it's pretty much comparable. I've, I've been quality. impressed with both. Yeah. Um, you know, they may be competitors, but from the, the outsider looking in, yeah. you know, I also have worked and owned pairs of TLB Mallorca. And I'm, I mean, I think the quality and yeah. the craftsmanship of both brands are, you know, exactly. very impressive. Exactly. Yeah. And then after, uh, I think it's finished my list, but then you can, um, I would have given advice to your um, uh, subscribers and viewers and go <clears throat> look also Eastern Europe. Yeah. Well, I know these days not a really good timing for to doing that, unfortunately, because it's not a very safe place to be, to say the mm -hmm. least. But there are very interesting things coming up in Romania, Hungary, of course, because uh, there's an enormous tradition yes. of shoemaking, specifically the Budapest, uh, this Budapest of massive shoes, yeah, you know, yeah, this yeah, is a very robust. Looking, exactly. Yeah. And so there, there's a real quality, but there also, for example, Mr. Kilman in Poland, very interesting shoemaker, hmm. whole handmade for less than a thousand, wow. for example. You know, you have some people, who, I saw Hungary, Romania, okay, San Cristobal is more towards 2000, but it's mm -hmm. same thing, totally handmade. So Eastern Europe is very, is becoming very interesting. For the moment, I didn't select any ready to wear because it's more like um, uh, older artisan, sure. giving yeah. you almost a bespoke experience for yeah. a fraction of the price. Yeah. But it's a very, very interesting place also to look Keep into. Keep your eyes on Eastern Europe. Exactly. Well, I mean, for good reason these days, but also for more um, agreeable reasons, I mm -hmm. hope, in the future. And uh, so I think that I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed because I think I'm going to teach them a little bit, uh, a few brands, but they know everything. <laughs> Pretty much everything. No, I was going to say, um, you, you there were yes, there you were several there were several brands on there that I was not aware of, and, and again, that's the reason that I love this collaboration is because you know we're all love shoes and and being able to to learn about new brands that again we weren't aware of either. So uh, I think this just is even more proof to to all of us out there that there's a lot of options out there for all of us. Um, yes. And it's not just what's down the street at your local department store. If you just get out there and do a, a search online yes. um, and start talking to other guys in the shoe blogs, you're, you're gonna come across a lot of these up and coming brands that are making amazing looking shoes course, for a half the price of uh, And we did on tutorial talks because we, we, we spoke about uh, the shoe snob, but you, we didn't give the name of our channel. It's called Sartorial Talks. Yes. We yes. forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so on Sartorial Talks, we do uh, selections of, of shoes and things. I think you have the, our selection from 2019. It's still it was, online. Mm -hmm. 
uh, we, did, we split it in two parts, under 500, above 500. And then you can go continue the journey with other brands that yeah. we cherish. You know. And I will put the links to those videos as well as his channel on our description uh, in this video. So definitely go check out Hugo's channel, uh, but also watch those videos because yeah, I've seen them all. And uh, I agree with you, a lot of these brands as well as some new ones here yes. um, were on there that you yes. talk. Between channels, podcasts, blogs, books, uh, books. books. <laughs> this is mine. It Just sits right on my coffee table. Yeah. And, um, and, an and Instagram. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's such a wealth of knowledge that is just, it's right there waiting for you. And so check them out. Thank you. You're very kind. I was, uh, I, we, we, we're going to continue the discussion for hours, but I think we have to finish a little bit there, right? I, yeah, I agree. As much yeah. as I'd love to keep talking. Yeah, I, me too. But the thing is, I'm French. You know what <laughs> I need now? A good glass of wine. That's, we'll do that every dinner. Okay. So we're going to wrap up. Again, thank you so much, Hugo, for being here Pleasure. on our channel. We really appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I know it's a bit long for some of you, but I hope you enjoyed the knowledge. Um, and, and check out these brands. Again, you guys have been asking us for years now, give me brands in this price point that you recommend. Well, here's a bunch of them. Again, we'll put the links down below and uh, you know, definitely go check them out. I hope this was informative and helpful to you all. So until next time, y'all have a good one. Cheers. <laughs>